On the last Saturday before Christmas, Frame Arts Warehouse hosts the Winnipeg Makers Market. Live music amongst a diverse group of local vendors. December 20th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at 318 Ross Avenue. Yeah. Oh, man! Woo. Oh, man! Woo. John! Yeah, Dan. Oh, it is time to bring out our guest. Tell me about it. I'll tell you all about it, John. Our guest was uh, recently in the most recent uh, Winnipeg election. Spit it he out. Also energized a group of people who don't typically uh, go to the polls. Lots of young people finally went out and voted. Mm -hmm. He is super awesome. I'm a huge fan. Because of the young people factor, I call him the Millennial Falcon. Give it up for Robert Falcon who left. <laughs> Woo! People like you. I think so. <laughs> How do they like me? TV's Steven Seagal. <laughs> WWF's Shawn Michaels. And Winnipeg's Robert Falcon who led. Three excellent accomplished ponytails. <laughs> uh, mine's different. That's true. Mm -hmm. But how do you do it every day? You just... Well, actually, I get my wife to do it. Okay. She would say, uh, every morning I say, honey, I've got to go, I've got to go, I'm late. Help me, help me, help me, you have to do my braid again. And she goes, why can't you get up earlier in the morning to get me to do this? And I say, I can't do it, I'm tired. <laughs> Just do it. It is sweet, though. It's kind of like uh, something people recognize. It's like a part of the, the whole Falcon Ouellette image, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's, um, I, was, I know walking downtown, I used to get stopped quite often, and I still do, and I know a lot of other uh, Aboriginal gentlemen who have uh, long hair with braids, and uh, one's on TV at APTN Network, and another couple of friends, and they say they also get stopped, and they get confused with Robert, and people ask them questions. Really? What are they doing for the mayor election? Oh, How's man. things going? <laughs> are you thinking of the Liberals or the NDP? And uh, those are some of the questions they get, and they go, Robert, you have to stop uh, wearing a braid, you know, wear your hair some <laughs> other way. Or people have to just look a little harder, I think. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all look alike, don't we? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, speaking of the election, though, you did something that I would say not many people have done. You were a new candidate and new to the whole scene, and you ended up energizing a huge segment of the population and placed quite well for a very first time. Uh, I don't know if this is too vague, but what did you do that was so <laughs> I, I think I think it's something in the water that uh, people drink in Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs> it comes from Shoal Lake, and I have some friends out there, so. <laughs> uh, okay. That's awesome. Um, now, uh, like, but seriously though, like you, you did <laughs> third place. How do you know I'm not being serious? No, no. I do. You know what? That's a good I, answer. I feel like a big part of it was that you were brave enough to bring out new ideas. You know, like you were saying things that most people weren't saying. They were just saying sort of the same old thing. And I think a lot of people that are younger are really tired of that. Was that a scary thing for you? Uh, well, in fact, I, what I tried to do in, throughout the campaign was really uh, speak in a way that I thought was really truthful and not to really uh, use a filter of political correctness through my brain. Oh, hold on, I got to call here. Hmm? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, uh-huh. Okay, so that's my campaign manager and he just told me uh, to say that, uh, you know, we ran a great campaign and things are very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. No, but seriously, we, we just really, <laughs> we, that, that's the problem I think in politics today is too often we have uh, people who are running in politics and because they owe something to someone, and this is always my feeling because they're in a political party and the political structure is so structured, it forces people to, when they go speak, they have to think, think, they have to think almost three or four times before they say something mm -hmm. uh, because they don't want to offend anyone, they don't want to upset this crowd, they don't want to upset this crowd. And what it creates is people who, in the end of the time or at the end of the day, become disabused with politics, they don't believe it anymore because they mm -hmm. don't believe the person's actually saying what they're going to be doing and it's not truthful. 
Yeah. What do you think, though? <laughs> I mean, sorry, guys, sorry. But I was just wondering, um, you know, because of your popularity, you obviously are going to have some parties interested in you being a part of their party, you know, make it a bigger party. And uh, <laughs> do you think... John you, loves parties. Well, <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, I just zoned out there. Okay, yeah, <laughs> good parties. Um, do you think that'll change, though, if you become, say, part of a federal party, like, that you can still say what you want to say? I hope so, but I also... You hope it'll I change? Also, no, I also, no, I hope I can... <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope I can continue speaking what I believe is the truth, and I hope I can find a political party um, which reflects some of my values. I understand, obviously, when you're in politics uh, and you're involved in a large organization that you have to sometimes have a bit of a give and take, but at the end of the day, if you're in a political party, hopefully the values that they're putting forward are the values that you share most intimately within yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if I was going to support a political party, and I'm not really connected to any of the political parties, I am starting to uh, pick one or... Like uh, a free agent. Yeah. Uh, well, I, <laughs> a free agent, I think we're all free agents. How many people are actually in political parties today? How many of us are involved in political parties? There are so few people nowadays who are members of political parties because at the end of the day, they don't see themselves. And so uh, I just think, you know, we need to start getting more engaged young people. We need to start saying our opinion. And I thought at the end of the campaign, this is incredible. Uh, I think a lot of the political class here in Manitoba actually realized something had extraordinary had happened that a lot of young people, Aboriginal people, people who had never voted for had come out. And when you saw the, just the final budget that had just come out, the throne speech, uh, they came out with something uh, for young people for the first time uh, concerning student loans, the NDP government, uh, mm -hmm. because they realized that if they're going to go through and to win the next majority government, they're going to have to somehow connect with young people. Now, I don't think they've understood, perhaps, that you have to speak in a truthful way, but <laughs> at the end of the day, they're attempting, they're trying something. I agree. <laughs> And that's where I'm probably going to get another phone call saying, Robert, you've gone far enough. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't mention that part about the truth. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, you have, uh, like I heard in the news, that you've been entertaining offers from some of the federal parties. They, they want you, some of them. Is that necessarily the case, or are you sort of doing the work yourself? Are you looking at the party that, and like maybe approaching them yourself, or are they coming to you? Uh, they're coming to me. So Ooh. I've had, you know, I've had conversations with uh, the Liberals, the NDP, the Green Party. I've also uh, had a call from the Communist Party of Canada, which is uh, very interesting. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> apparently they're looking for a new leader. Uh, <laughs> Always interesting to take something from the ground up and try and build it up, but... Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> if you don't want that one, I'll take that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> right, yeah. well, you don't want it, Rob? Do you know anyone? <laughs> <laughs> anyone on this couch can be in the <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I have been talking to people. I've been trying to, you know, understand how the, these political parties work. And, and obviously, I've been following politics for a long time. But to just really find out if it's my values that are reflected in that party and have conversations with the leadership to find out what type of leader, what type of individual I think they are. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is actually, you know, very, you know, it's actually quite good. I think we should be very contented with what we have in many of the political parties, the types of individuals who are, who are in leadership roles. So you are interested in federal politics, right? Uh, or is it? I, well, I'd love to contribute in some way to uh, public life. I'd love to be able to see somehow some of the values that I tried to put forward for the city of Winnipeg put forward either provincially or federally. And it seems that what's going on right now is there's more interest on the federal side. And a lot of people have been calling me. Uh, and it's made my life a little bit harder at the University of Manitoba to actually do the work that I was hired to do, uh, which makes my <laughs> life at home because I have to get that work done. Uh, talking to those boys talking on the to phone pe all well, day. Well, people are calling. Yeah, literally people are calling. Like uh, normal citizens just call you up at the university and say, hey, can we have a conversation for five minutes? And, you know, never the one to turn anyone down. Uh, sure, let's talk. What right. would you like to talk about? Well, I guess you can't in that position. <laughs> uh, before we go... We've had a lot of talk sh about shop so far. What kind of <laughs> <laughs> about shop True. class? 
your favorite saw. No, um, <clears throat> we've talked a lot about what kind of things do you like? Dewalt. All right, you heard it there. Uh, <laughs> what kind of stuff do you do for fun? What is, what is fun to Robert Falcon who led? What are your hobbies? Uh, getting up late on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then coming well, downstairs and, and coming downstairs and seeing that my kids have not spread cereal around the room like this mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> while watching TV because I have five kids they're 10 8 6 4 and 2 cool. and uh, and literally when you come when you get up in the morning sometimes it's a total disaster zone with milk and uh, cereal everywhere I can't even imagine mm -hmm. yeah it's like probably living at home with a couple of you guys yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine yeah. So true. Robert Falcony led thank you very much for being here. Thanks. It was a great, great time. Okay. We'll be right back with our musical guest, Nasa. Hey, hey.